I was just, I, I'm thinking, okay, y'all, we're Polly. So I'm just Polly coach. Like she ain't tripping, you know, we're going <laughs> to, we're going to talk. We're going to get to know each other. So I wasn't thinking that much about it. I was just being myself. I, I was cognizant of Sanu, but I didn't think that my interaction with Brittany and Sean would hurt her. Yeah. Yeah. But what I mainly remember from that experience was Ashmal and Ramon. And that was my first moment of being like, oh my gosh, people's real life heart and feelings are getting so involved into this experience. Like, oh, when she, and like a BB moment, which is like a beautiful black moment. Do we get any of those in this episode? Black. We have a chaotic five moment of the chaotic five moment. Yeah. And you're watching Black by Reality. Black by Batty. And those who love us. <laughs> Hello, you are watching and are listening to Black Bi Reality, a place for Black Bi baddies and those who love us. I am your host, Nicole Weaver, an entertainment reporter currently writing for Collider, but also your HBIC head bisexual in charge of this podcast. And I'm so excited because, as you know, we did the recaps of Couple to Thruple. I'm still seeing you guys actually starting it all from the first episode. Um, and I'm excited that I'm starting to talk to the singles that were on the show. Today, I have Darian. Hi, Darian. Hey. Hi, Nicole. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to be here. Oh, thank you for being here. Um, my first question is, what is your experience with polyamory before getting onto the show? Okay, so my experience with polyamory started with me dating a couple. And that was just like the most magical relationship that I ever had. So after that, I was like, oh, I love this. This is going to be my lifestyle. And so that was like about six, seven years ago now. Nice. I feel like actually we didn't get that many like positive past stories about polyamory. So can you tell me a little bit about what was so magical about it? Yeah. So during this time of my life, I had only dated like girls by myself and then guys by myself. But I noticed that every time I was dating just one, I was like missing the energy of either the masculine or feminine. Mm -hmm. So then I decided like, okay, I think I need to date a couple. And I promise you, Nicole, right? When I spoke that into existence, I met this couple like the very next day. Where? Oh, on Tinder. <laughs> nice, nice. Yeah. And so Tinder works sometimes. Yeah, I've had amazing online dating experiences, honestly. Yeah, so it was also their first poly experience, and we just right away talked about all of the boundaries, like what would be okay with, how our relationship would work, and it immediately started off as a very much like, how would this work in a relationship, not mm -hmm. as in like, how would this work in like a sexual situation? Okay. So it was really nice. Like they were an established couple. They were married and we dated, I think for like about like three months. And it was just beautiful to witness their love for each other and then their love for me. And I just loved it. I loved it. I felt like all of the doors in my heart just like flooded open. Mm -hmm. And and yeah, it was a really successful relationship. It ended because I felt like I was getting the short end of the stick being the third coming into it. I felt like okay. I got the least amount of time or like the least amount of privileges or rights. And so, but I still loved it enough to enter into other relationships being like, hey, I'm Polly. This is the type of relationship dynamic that I enjoy. And mm -hmm. I've been Polly ever since then. Has it been more like solo poly after that or you're on the search for another couple? So after that relationship, I was in my longest relationship, which was like four years with a guy. And we invited people into a relationship throughout that time. Sometimes it would just be like me dating girls or like us dating girls together or like mm -hmm. him dating people on the side too. But, and then after that, so that ended like about two years ago. Since then I've been solo poly. Nice. Um, I have had like a few experiences with couples since then, but nothing super serious, I would say. Um, but I really, I think my favorite dynamic is the solo poly dynamic. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that yeah. makes a lot, a lot of sense. Um, going back to the one positive um, relationship you had with a couple, you said it was a good experience and it didn't start off sexually. Mm -hmm. Do you think that's like maybe something for someone to look out for if they're interested in polyamory? 
Definitely, definitely. I feel like there's a lot of different motivations that people can have entering into this space. And since there is such a sex positive stereotype when it comes to polyamory, I think that that's what people are just automatically thinking. Mm -hmm. um, so I think it is important to go in knowing what your intentions are, knowing what your partner's intentions are. So that way, like, if you all are into it for like a sexual experience, you already know what it is off the bat. Nice, nice. Um, going into the show. All right. On the first episode, we had that big mixer. So everyone's just getting to know each other. And you were talking to Sean and Brittany about chakra points. Yes. Um, <laughs> what else did you guys talk about? Oh, we talked about so much. That was such a good, juicy conversation. We talked about um, just like where they are in their spiritual journeys, um, like what experience that they've had previously, like with other people, which was mm -hmm. really none at that point. Um, I was asking them like what their boundaries were. They were just kind of like, oh, we're like open to anything. Um, since they were saying they were spiritual, I was like, oh, have you all tried Tantra before? Mm -hmm. And they had never heard what Tantra was. So I was just like telling them about my experiences with being tantric or like having tantric relationships mm -hmm. and um we just kind of talked about like what we like to do in the real world in LA uh, we were talking about like how close we live to each other and just yeah just it was like very first date vibes for sure nice nice I I know you're a spiritual girly I looked at your Instagram and you do seminars can you kind of explain to like the viewers and listeners what you do yeah, yeah. So I have a business called Marijuana Meditations, and I promote conscious cannabis consumption. So I host these events for people in the cannabis community to come get together, really open their hearts up, have like meaningful connections and conversations. And then we have a sacred smoke sesh where everybody goes around and says their intentions for smoking and how they would really like to experience their high. Because my thing is like, what are we really smoking for? You know, like, where is this high point taking us? And is it really fulfilling our highest selves? So that's the type of environment that I nurture. And then from there, we go into a guided meditation and a sound bath. And the plant medicine really helps to just, like, relax you into the meditation so that you mm -hmm. can actually kind of, like, quiet your mind a bit or really listen and observe the thoughts that are coming through so that you can allow them to pass and allow it to be a really healing experience. Damn. Can I just say the black women that they got for this show are amazing. Like, and a lot of like, it seems like teachers, like even Brittany, she's a fitness trainer. Like mm -hmm. Danu is teaching people about polyamory. You with doing this. It's like, yeah, it's pretty stacked. I, I just love that. <laughs> and I kind of wish now that I could like have a show of all of you guys just teaching <laughs> right. what you guys do. <laughs> right. Yeah, I love all the women, especially the black women that were on there. Like even Peach, like I know everybody yeah. thinks that Peach and I have beef because she didn't hug me. But no, like we're I gonna love get Peach. there. <laughs> we're going to get there. <laughs> but yes, I, I was one of the proponents of like uh, more Peach. I mean. <laughs> You could just, it's so good when someone just has that personality, though, that can shine even if they get, like, so little uh, screen time. Yeah. Made yeah. a mark. Okay. So, on that first day, did you have a ranking in your head of which couples you wanted to go into the resort with? Um, I did have a ranking in my head of which couples, but honestly, Nicole, I was very intrigued by the singles on that first day. I was like, Ooh, can I mix and match over here? <laughs> um, at that point I was really interested in Junior and Mia. I wanted to like make my own thruple with them. But, okay. um, once I realized that that was not going to happen, I would say like out of the couples, it was like Brittany and Sean and, um, Corey and Wilder. They're like, my okay, team. yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. What were your conversations with Corey and Wilder on the first day? And why do you think did you anticipate of like that not happening then? Um, I wouldn't say anticipated it not happening. I felt like it was kind of like very 50 50 because I got really good vibes from Corey and Wilder. It felt like very like giddy and playful and just light mm -hmm. and just like like a really nice effortless flow with them um so I really enjoyed that so I really it, on day one I was like I don't know who I'm going to end up like more attracted to but I really like both of them nice nice all right then and like Mia I, I could see you and Mia <laughs> like, right? I feel like just watching how she how everything played out with her and um Dylan and Lauren I was like 
I can see it. You said Junior. Yeah. I wish I got to see more of Junior. What was it about Junior that you were feeling? Oh, I just love Junior so much. Like, we bonded a lot, a lot. So I just feel like he's, like, such a beautiful man. But mm -hmm. also, like, his energy is so just, like, his heart is open. He's, like, very real, raw, vulnerable. But he's also one of those people that he's not going to really just talk to you if you don't talk to him. So, mm -hmm. and I'm, like, a, I'm going to ask you all the questions type of thing. But, like, once I asked him the questions, he was super, like, oh, yeah, here's the answer. And, like, opened up to me so fast. So I was just so curious about him. Mm -hmm. like really intrigued yeah nice. he has a beautiful smile and i just love junior so much yeah from the short time that he was on there when he was saying goodbye to maxi and ash um he told them like take care of each other which my host host was like they're a couple of course they would but i'm like no like i think that was like such a like meaningful goodbye like people you don't hear people say that exactly exactly junior and i um have gotten really close even after the show mm -hmm. and like if he like sends me off in an uber he's like take care of her she's a precious cargo like do not do anything to her make sure she gets home safe and he's like text me when you get home he's like very very nurturing and caring like that like he'll come to my meditations and help me set up he's like whatever you need babe i got you like he has a really nice pure heart Oh, so he is in L.A. Yeah, he's in L.A. Yeah. yeah. Is... I just saw him yesterday. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> We're just friends, like... though, for the record. Okay. That's what I was asking. Why? <laughs> <laughs> um, why? Um, I feel like after the show, we just – we, because I left the show, you know, with mm -hmm. Brittany and Sean, and mm -hmm. we just really, like, everybody on the cast just created like a really tight friendship, I would say. Yeah. So I feel like it kind of just like drew that line in the sand. Yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm starting to hear that more. And I'm like, oh, okay. I guess I'm just so into the show that I'm just like, let's keep it going. I know, <laughs> right? I did not want it to end. Yeah. All right. So what did you know about, oh, okay. Brit yeah, what did you know about Britney's and Sean's experience with Sanu before you? And were you surprised about anything watching it um, as a viewer? Yeah, so I remember talking to Sanu at the mixer when they were still in their throuple and being like, how's it going, babe? Like, And she was very like, girl... They do not, I think I remember her saying like, they do not know how to communicate or like, mm -hmm. like that, I think that was like the main, the type of energy. So I was like, oh, okay, I don't know how this is gonna go because at that point I had already bonded with Sanu a bit more than I had with Brittany and Sean, just like from being behind the scenes, like a lot of the time, like waiting to get on set and everything. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, okay, like, I don't know what's going on with that, but I trust what she's saying you know? Mm -hmm. um, and then Brittany and Sean hadn't told me anything about what their relationship was like, but I did kind of get the vibe of like, it didn't seem like it was like super locked in. But yeah. I, in my mind, I was like, I know I'm about to get picked one way or another. <laughs> so it didn't really feel like a surprise to me. And then when I went on the dinner with them and saw their interactions, it wasn't giving like that they were super into each other. So that was mm -hmm. also like, hmm, I peeped that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I wanted to ask you about that because there was that dinner where everyone can bring their second choices. You're there. And I felt like Brittany's conversation with Sonu in front of you was like so tense. And then we see later like Sonu kind of like spirals from all of that. Can you tell us about that dinner from your perspective? <laughs> Um, I was just, you, I, I'm thinking, okay, y'all, we're Polly. So I'm Polly coach. Like she ain't tripping, you know, we're going <laughs> to, we're going to talk. We're going to get to know each other. So I wasn't thinking that much about it. I was just being myself. I, I was cognizant of Sanu, but I didn't think that my interaction with Brittany and Sean would hurt her. Yeah. Yeah. But what I mainly remember from that experience was Ashmal and Ramon. And that was my first moment of being like, oh my gosh, people's real life heart and feelings are getting so involved into this experience like mm -hmm. going that was the moment where I was like this is very very real like I can tell you nothing was scripted like nothing mm -hmm. was like plotted or placed it was all very very real and that was the dinner that was the moment where I was like okay this is very authentic yeah yeah what were what were you able to catch 
from all the drama that was going on there and um i was just able to catch that jonathan was on the outs like jonathan was looking at me like girl please help help he's like they're fighting a lot i don't know what to do like and mm -hmm. i could just like the tension was very very thick and mm -hmm. we were trying to ask uh Ashma, like and Ramon, like, what's going on? Like, Ramon was just like, so stone cold, just, you know, we're like, how's it going? You know, we're yeah. all over here talking about our experiences so far. And he was just like, so then when he got up to leave, I was like, okay, wow. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Dang. <laughs> <laughs> it just sounds like a lot of like the, the singles looking at each other, like, oh. <laughs> I was like, are you okay? Do you need yeah. some help? I was, like, wondering... <laughs> uh, I was wondering how much you guys could communicate with each other, and it seems like not often unless it's the mixtures. So I'm like, yeah. whenever can you guys pass this um, information around to each other? Exactly. So um, the swap ceremony where Brittany said that they were definitely going to swap – um that that was a little tense because from peach's side she thought all right i had it in the bag i'm going yeah. to the resort they say your name you turn for a hug she refused when did we talk out what was going on <laughs> um so i hadn't talked to peach after that until i want to say like the next mixer when she okay. was like girl i'm so sorry that i couldn't hug you like if i hugged you i was going to cry it was not because I didn't want to hug you. It was just because, like, I needed to protect my emotions in that moment. Absolutely. Yeah. And I figured that that's what it was, too, because Peach and I were pretty close, mm -hmm. like, up until that point. So I didn't think – I didn't really take it super personal. I was just more like, oh, babe. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Watching back how, like, what they were telling her at the mixer, did you kind of get it or – you know, I got it, but at the same time, I was like, babe, like, they, you, they clearly had a whole situation about how they wanted to give me the beat, so, like, that should have already been your clue. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. Yeah, but I did feel bad for her. Like, I could see why she felt, like, why she felt betrayed or, like, upset, mm -hmm. but if I were Peach, I feel like I would have picked up on what was happening, honestly. Got it, got it. Um, after that, we saw Denise, Corey, and Wilder have to talk out their differences. There was a compatibility challenge, so the topic of children came up. Um, you also said no to children while Brittany and Sean said yes. Did you guys have a similar talk? Like, yeah. Um, I think it was more like a lighthearted talk. It was just like, oh, well, if we get there, then Brittany will have the babies. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It ain't gonna be me. It ain't no, gonna be me. No. <laughs> Do you think I think a lot of people had like confusion, um, took mis mixed messages that like children even came up, but it's like some people who are polyamorous do proceed with children, so maybe it's not the show like copying, pasting monogamy onto polyamory. But I don't know. What is your perspective on that? Um, I feel like every every single relationship is unique into itself. And I feel like as a society, we try to mirror and match other relationships that we see. And I think that's why we kind of can fall into like more traditional patterns. But I really strive to go out of the authenticity of my heart. Even if I'm feeling poly one day, it's okay for me to feel monogamous another day. And I think that the show kind of tried to copy and paste what they've seen out of what they know about polyamory, but also what they know about monogamy and kind of like mm -hmm. blending those two to the best of what they could to the best of what they feel like our society can digest right now. Yeah. Um, so childbirth is a no. Would you though be dating a couple who did go forward with having a baby and like continue moving forward? Oh, I don't you know. <laughs> It's still a no for me, dog. <laughs> That's definitely something that I've been thinking about a lot as I'm getting, like, into my late 20s. You know, mm -hmm. people out here, they have kids, you know? So mm -hmm. I'm like, am I really prepared to fall into that stepmom role or, like, that auntie vibe? 
I don't know. It's definitely mm. something that I am that I've been thinking about more and more. But I feel like it's just something I want to have. I would I would have conversations with like, yeah. hey, look, this is where I stand. I don't know if I would be able to show up in this way for your child. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty good because it could be pretty flexible. Of yeah, what kind of monkey you are. Yeah. And- being a, or do you identify as bisexual or pansexual? Both. I like sexually yeah. fluid. Yeah. Yeah, that's why I'm like, I like bi because I feel like it just came to me first and I knew that. But then mm-hmm. when pansexuality came up, I was like, I guess mm-hmm. either. Yeah. Um, but um, what was I even going to say? I don't know. Being a bi auntie, having that influence is like kind of cool. <laughs> oh, it's cool. I love it. I love it for me. I love it for my niece. But yeah. um, it's definitely, <laughs> it, it comes with its own set of challenges for sure. You talked a lot about needing more physical touch from Brittany and Sean. Do you think there was a moment where you're like, okay, that was the turning point. I got what I wanted. Mm, no, okay. I don't feel like I fully ever got like the full, just like mm, can just relax and lean into you type of physical touch. Mm-hmm. that I was able to get from like even some of the singles when we would share like cuddly moments. I felt like since it was such a big barrier that they were overcoming, they were mm-hmm. still in that newness of what it meant to like relax into being intimate in that way. So although I did see some some progression, I don't feel like I fully was able to be like yeah, like oh, like fully able to like relax into it. Yeah, yeah. Did you anticipate that being a problem when going on the show? I can imagine that there's so many issues you might like anticipate going on a polyamorous show, but like not getting a lot of physical touch doesn't seem the first on my mind. <laughs> right. Yeah, I was surprised. I was surprised, but I also went into it thinking that the couples would be more experienced. Yeah. So that was also like the first level of surprise. Is that something that was told to you or you just, just like assumed? Like people I just were assumed. Go on this. Okay. Yeah. Got it. Got it. <laughs> Did you have any like were you hesitant at all then of like, oh, especially for Brittany and Sean, because they were like new new. Like you could tell Dylan and Lauren have done stuff. They're mm-hmm, they're mm-hmm. out here. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um, I would say I was hesitant just because I'm like, are y'all sure you're okay with this? Because I know this is a lot. Like, for somebody's first time, because even me having my first, like, poly experience being on the side of, like, being a person in the couple was very Mm -hmm. different than me being the single going into a couple. And I would say it's a way more challenging to be on the couple end of things. So I just kept checking in with them, like, are you okay? Like, how do you feel? And that's why I personally try to take things really slow so that Brittany would feel comfortable because I know like any little thing can trigger you in that space. Yeah, that's, that's true. That's fair. And you did voice that, which I was like, that makes sense. Especially when you were like, how can I touch you guys when you guys aren't touching each other? (laughs) Exactly. Exactly. (laughs) I feel like that's just creating like jealousy right there. That's a recipe Mm -hmm. for jealousy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, let's talk about the sweat lodge. (laughs) So to me as a viewer, I think the sweat lodge was like, not even a turning point, but was painted of like, okay, we're we're having some big conversations. It was all about the truth. And you were like, look, if I kissed someone else, what, how would you feel? And like, What's the sexual new information was coming to you? What other questions did you ask in that scene? Yes. And yeah. What, I asked what else them you- um, what were some red flags that they had felt from me? They said zero. They didn't have any red flags, which I thought, thought was a red flag within itself. <laughs> because I'm like, ha- I know I'm amazing at everything, but like really nothing. Like there's, you know, this is your first poll experience. Like, there's nothing that's showing up for you. Um, so that made me feel like they may be, like, dealing with things that they weren't ready to really reveal to me yet. Um, I also asked them what were some aspects about each other that they really admired about each other, which they mm-hmm. answered beautifully. Um, and then I asked them what they felt like I could provide coming into their relationship as a third. Okay. And um, and they basically said that they felt like I could help them with being more physically affectionate, and which yeah, I feel like I did, and I feel like mm-hmm. Sean he he was really vocal about how he was grateful that I was aiding in that department. 
look, the way Sean became vocal, that man, <laughs> he cracked jokes every time you guys would do something. And I'm like, how are we, how, how are you going to like help build this if you're cracking jokes over here, sir, and killing exactly. the vibe? <laughs> exactly, exactly. I'm like, stop it with your ad libs, okay? He was very, he had a very um like playful, like kind of sarcastic demeanor mm -hmm. with me. And I feel like that's kind of like the way that he flirted was like kind of like picking fun. But yeah. I was, I had to tell him, I'm like, I cannot handle that. Like I do not handle sarcasm at all. So you're just like hurting my feelings and laughing at it. So stop, please. <laughs> fair, fair. What's your sign? I'm a Leo. Leo and the, oh yeah of course first of all um when someone asked that I was like she's a Leo look at yes. her hair yeah look at her hair <laughs> <laughs> well, what's your other two um I'm an Aquarius rising and an Aries moon whoa all right all right a moon so very much like self first and then the Aquarius that's interesting because also Brittany's an Aquarius mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. interesting interesting um all right so you said Ash was your type what's your type I me I am my own type <laughs> yo <laughs> such a Leo get her out of here get her out of here I love like a little short petite some type of like melanin situation um yeah because when i'm with girls i really love to feel either a balance of energy with them or like a slight more dominance with myself and it's harder for me to do that if i'm engaging with a girl that's like a lot bigger than me because i'm 411 i'm really small okay Got and it. then with guys i would say um i tend to like like light skin guys with like some facial hair mm -hmm. a clean cut dressed very nicely um yeah got it got it <laughs> that got very specific so that all works you made it known that you were into maxi and ash but you also gave um a lot of power to Brittany and sean saying well you know only if you swap me out i'll explore this do you regret at all just not swapping on your own why did you decide to like leave it up to them um, I feel like uh, I feel like after the fact, I've had like a little bit of regret because it's just like, let's just play. Let's just see what would happen, you know. Mm -hmm. But like in the moment, I was like, no, this is definitely not a good idea for me to swap because logistically, it does not make sense at all. Like logistically, um, Sean, Brittany and I all live like 20 minutes away from each other. Yeah. Max and Ash, they live across the country. Okay. Yeah, so I yeah, didn't feel like it was realistic to do it outside of the house, nor did I feel like it was realistic to have an authentic relationship with them living in the same house as like what would be my exes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And at that point I had like already built built such a good relationship with Brittany and Sean. I didn't feel like it wasn't because I didn't like Brittany and Sean. It was just because I wanted to I wanted both and it wasn't yeah. like a war situation. Yeah. Yeah. That's fair. That's fair. You saw you you had the um the short sided I want this kiss right now, but then you also saw the long long haul and was like, oh, but it doesn't really make sense. That makes sense. Um so the season ends and you guys have to make this decision. I kind of made fun of how they did the final ceremony with you three because they were so obviously using the same clip of you and it looked like you were just like I know. <laughs> like, you became an NPC or like a sim glitching. <laughs> and I was like is Darian stepping forward or not? Like just Stop it. Stop right. it. Uh, but what was that final ceremony? How did that feel and everything? So there was actually like a big part of that that got cut out because like throughout the whole time I was like, y'all, you know, I'm not your girlfriend, right? Just because we're in the situation, I am not your girlfriend. Like we'd have to have a conversation about that. And so stepping forward and making that commitment, I was like, okay, well, like, what does this mean to you other than what we've been doing right now? You know? And I was like, and then Sean's like, okay, Darian, will you be, will you be our girlfriend? Uh, and no, he said something like, Darian, do you want to be our girlfriend? And I was like, no, 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 that is not how you're about to ask it. 
And then he was like, okay, Darian, Brittany and I would like, will, will you please be our girlfriend? And then I was like, yes. And then <laughs> and then I said forward. But that that's what really had happened. Okay, okay. So was it like another, because Scott, Scott was through with all of you on that final day. <laughs> because I think it was Jonathan, right, who asked to talk to you. Um, Ramon and Ashmal before making the final decision. So was it like that, that you guys were like, actually, we need a second, go talk, or you did all of this right there? We did all of it right there. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> all right. Yeah, you left as their girlfriend. What was the th throuple dynamic like after the show? After the show, we were like super tight because nobody else in our lives had experienced what we had. So yeah. we had like this like super tight bond where we just like wanted to be around each other all the time. And um, I was over there like all the time. Sean was even talking about like what it would be like for me to move in with them. And all of a sudden we were like planning some trips together. And then basically I wanted to like be intimate with them, you know, and so I would like try to you know romance them and i got denied a few times mm -hmm. and i was like okay like like we did we did have some experiences together but mm -hmm. not as many as i would have liked honestly mm -hmm. and so i was like look um i want to be honest with you i'm going on a date tomorrow and then they were like nah no no like we're good Wait. we're good Wait. you don't know what you want and i'm like but i told you all i wanted to enter this as an open relationship you know, I'm not here for the monogamous triad. And they were like, no, like, that's not going to work for us, basically. That's basically what happened. Wait, so did you guys not agree what girlfriend meant? You guys didn't agree on what girlfriend meant? Oh, we did. We did. At least I thought that we did. But Sean would always be like, yeah, you're saying that you're um, open in your eyes, but you're really closed in our eye, in my eyes. That's what he would say. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, ha, ha, ha. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if that's what you want to believe, but I'm going to tell you what it is. Yeah, that's, that's wild. Okay. Um, where did that note about, you guys had a note at the end about your careers. I'm like, what does that mean? I know. Right when I saw that, I picked up the phone. I was like, Brittany, what did you say to them? And she's like, girl, I have no idea where that came from. We didn't say anything like that. We didn't say that you weren't invited to the wedding. I don't know what that's about. And I'm like, that was so weird. Because I told, I told the producers, like, they didn't want me dating other people outside of them. And that was like, that was the truth. So I don't know why it was twisted like that. Very weird. Yeah. And like <laughs> to do that and then we don't even like get a reunion <laughs> so anyone can address anything. <laughs> it's like different careers. <laughs> oh my goodness. Well, it sounds like you guys are all on good terms then. Yeah, we we're on good terms. We saw each other at the finale party and mm -hmm. that was really, really fun. And um, yeah, so I would say we're on good terms for sure. Yeah, awesome. I would like to spend more time with them and just, like get to know them more and like the stage of their life and where they are now and yeah. Mm -hmm. Are you surprised by the engagement news? No. Okay, okay. Did you see it coming? Yes. <laughs> How did you see it coming? Um, we had like talked about it, like kind of like what their plans were, like kind of where they were in their relationship. So mm -hmm. it did not surprise me at all. Oh, yeah. Okay. And yeah, because like we were we were really tight when we first left the show. We were thinking about like what it would be like if we were all to get married, like how that how everything would just like play out down the line. Mm. Yeah. They were trying to wipe you up. They were trying. Everybody to wipe trying to wipe me up, Nicole. <laughs> <laughs> like, please. So, what has your dynamic been? Who else do you keep? in touch with like the most outside of Brittany and Sean? I would say probably Junior and Mia. Okay. Um, I talk to Jonathan every once in a while. I would love to have a closer relationship with Jonathan, but we just kind of, we our schedules never end up aligning. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I would say mainly them. I, I love everyone from the show so much, mm -hmm. so much. Like they're always gonna be my soul family, but the three of them for sure. Nice, yeah. nice. Um, did you take, I mean, it seems like, <laughs> it seems like you went into the situation, meaning the show, 
one way and came out probably the same way, but were there any lessons that you took from the experience? Yeah, I feel like I took away just the the legitness of what it means to commit because that was something that really made me realize like, okay, what would this look like if I truly like devote myself in this way? Mm -hmm. But I, what I also like a huge learning lesson for me as well was just when it comes to my desires of being like intimate with people, where does that come from? Because my attraction to Ash and Max was very like sexually charged, I would say. Mm -hmm. But I feel like it was more sexually charged because I knew in my mind that I couldn't actually have like a legit relationship with them. And I just mm -hmm. wanted to have that like quick fun in the moment, like hot moment. Mm -hmm. But with Brittany and Sean, where I could see it being more serious, I wanted to take it super, super slow with them. Yeah. And so I've seen that kind of play out in my life of like, if I don't feel like I could see myself in a relationship with somebody, I won't kiss them for like weeks. Mm -hmm. And what if I like, if I feel like it's just going to be like a fun for the moment, I'll kiss them that night. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think a lot of people work that way. Are you, and that's so interesting because I think you voice that, right? You voice that during the season of like, oh, maybe this is like me and commitment. And I think, I think people not wanting to commit gets a bad rep in our like very monogamous heteronormative society. So I don't think it's really an issue if it's not um, impeding your life. If you're yes. happy, that's the most important thing. So what is your, your take on it now? If like, Oh, it's just something that I recognize in myself that I'm good with, or is it something like you see that you want to work on? It's definitely something that I see that I want to work on. Um, like my current relationship status has gone from like very, very poly. Like after the show, I was like dating five people at once, having the ball. Like they all came to my birthday. They all knew about each other. It was amazing. And then um, I took like a leave of like abstinence. Like I took an abstinence break. And then that kind of like dwindled some people down to like two people. And then now it's kind of like honed into like one person all of a sudden. And I'm like, okay interesting um mm -hmm. whereas like if i go on dates with other people like i'm still just kind of like thinking about this one person mm -hmm. so i'm really having this moment of like discernment of like what is my most natural course of action right now like is it the most natural thing for me to commit because that's kind of like where my heart is leading towards but also am i just having this idea because that's like what society is telling me that i should do when i'm only like really in, in enveloping in like one person in this moment because mm -hmm. that might change down the line and then i might want to yeah. like open it up again so that's something that i've like been thinking about a lot as i yeah yeah a lot <laughs> <laughs> All right. It, life is a journey. Um, is there anything you want to say about this new relationship or you want to keep it to yourself? <laughs> um, hmm. I don't think so. I feel like with my relationships, I try to be like super private with them because I don't like to put them out there because then yeah. if, if we like separate or whatever, then I don't want people feeling like invested and like, Oh, like what yeah. happened? What happened? You know? Oh so my God. The social media. Did you see that Indian lesbian couple that broke up and everyone in the world, <laughs> maybe it's all of my queer Probably. Like, algorithm. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> but it was like, yeah, one cheated on the other days before the wedding. And now I'm just seeing so many people. I've never seen these people before. They look like very young South Indian, uh, South Asian girlies. Um, but yeah, everyone's talking about that. And I was like, wow, you guys were very invested in these people that I don't know about. <laughs> Right, exactly, exactly. So I feel like there's something really special and sacred about just, like, keeping that more close to your heart with other person. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that yeah. makes sense. Actually, something I'm thinking of, did you ever do, like, a session or a seminar with the couple to throuple cast? <laughs> Meaning what you do with marijuana? Oh, um, no, no, I wanted to, like, I even brought, like, one of my sound instruments to do some type of ceremony, but there was never, like, space for us to be able to do that, mm -hmm. and then I actually tried meditating with Sean and Brittany, and they turned me down, <laughs> they were like, no, we don't have time for that, I was like, just two minutes, please, and they're like, no, <laughs> but Junior, he comes to my meditations a lot, um, yes. Mia, she's come to some of my meditations as well, so, but yeah, that's pretty much as far as it's gone. 
Okay, okay. Um, what are you up to next? Next. So I've actually been thinking about writing a ebook on all of my poly experiences because at this point I've had like very the the different layers and levels and just identities when it comes to being poly and mm-hmm. even now having this moment where I'm kind of like considering exclusivity around that. So I'm writing um, an ebook on that with like some reflection questions that couples or solo poly people can go through to just think deeper on like why why they want to be poly and mm-hmm. all of like the nuances that come along with that. Um, and then I'm also doing like a lot with marijuana meditations right now. I'm also working on an ebook with that of how to be more of like a conscious cannabis consumer. And um, I have like weekly live events and sometimes like by like multiple times a week yeah. in LA and um, I'm working on some merch. I have like some physical products, like they're like loose leaf mm-hmm. um, smokable herbs that people can smoke for people that don't smoke THC when they come to my meditations. Mm-hmm. So I'm working on getting that out to like more dispensaries and smoke shops and yeah, so much, so much. I have like some research projects that I want to do down the line. Like it, it's going on and on and on and on. Like modeling, I'm like just got asked to be a lead in this film, so I'm thinking like maybe gonna start like my acting career. Like I'm just really mm-hmm. embracing all that's coming to me, feeling what resonates, and just going from there. All right, Batty, sorry for the abrupt ending. Uh, We had audio issues at the very end there, which were actually kind of funny. I might uh, share the blooper on social media. But anyways, please follow Darren on Darren Divinity on Instagram and Marijuana Meditations on Instagram. For me, I hope you follow Black by Reality across all socials rate this podcast if you're listening on your podcast um apps five stars leave a review and for youtube i hope you stick around subscribe check out our other content there's other couple to thruple interviews in this feed as well as so many other shows recovering currently recovering survivor we did love is blind we're waiting for that perfect match season that's coming up in the summer as well as big brother that's all for now bye